A common question we get here at BMP is how the hydraulic clutch system works on a BMW and how to bleed the system. So what I put together here is kind of a quick and easy demo piece just so you can see how it functions. The item above here is the clutch master cylinder. The clutch master cylinder attaches to your clutch pedal. Okay. Then you've got a flex line, a section of hard line, and then the clutch slave cylinder. The way it functions is your brake fluid reservoir, which is shared with the brake master cylinder, in this case we've just put a simple reservoir on top of the clutch slave or the clutch master, is taking in a reservoir of brake fluid. Inside the clutch master cylinder there's a piston and a chamber that holds about two to three ounces of brake fluid. That brake fluid, when you push your clutch pedal, will depress the piston like this and it'll force about two to three ounces of brake fluid through this line into the clutch slave cylinder. The clutch slave cylinder in turn has a piston which is connected to a rod and that pressurized brake fluid, since you cannot compress liquid, will pressurize the fluid, it pressurizes and pushes the piston out, pushes the rod out, depresses the clutch lever. The clutch lever in turn operates the clutch. The next part of this tech session is going to be how to identify which component has failed and how they fail. Most common failures are leaks. Each of these units has a seal on a piston. Once that seal has deteriorated, weakened, or given out, you'll get brake fluid leakage, hydraulic fluid leakage actually. On the clutch master cylinder, you'll typically get leakage through this dust boot, which will eventually either travel down your clutch pedal or get into your carpeting underneath your vehicle. You'll notice that it'll be a wet, oily film on the carpet or below the carpet that seems to never want to dry out. And what you have there is the seal inside the clutch master cylinder has failed and the, the brake fluid or hydraulic fluid is constantly leaking out. An indication is for weeks or months you'll be adding brake fluid to the vehicle with no indication on where it's going. It's always just disappearing. The other component that likes to leak is the clutch slave cylinder. That mounts to your transmission bell housing right about where the clutch and actually where the bell housing and the engine come together. That has a tiny little hole at the bottom of the bell housing and typically when that seal gives out inside the clutch slave cylinder that will leak down out of the bell housing on your garage floor. Now we've identified all the components We've identified how to figure out which component has failed, and now I'm assuming you've replaced either or both of the components. Now the biggest problem that I get after this, or I hear people complaining about, is I can't bleed the system completely or I'm having difficulty getting the air out of the system. Well this is the reason why. Air wants to travel uphill. It has a tendency to want to travel uphill. Your whole system now is full of air. You've replaced both components and there is no fluid in the system. You've got air in the system. Introducing some brake fluid into the master cylinder and then proceeding to pump the brake or the clutch pedal to bleed the air out is really just moving an ounce of brake fluid forward and then as soon as you let go of the pedal the air starts traveling back again. So you're basically just shuffling the air back and forth. This demonstration and this technique I have to do this bleeding process is going to be bleeding the clutch system in the way that it naturally wants to expel the air and that is uphill. Air wants to travel uphill. So what we're going to do is kind of a unique system that I discovered years ago is we're going to take a common oil can, a clean new oil can, fill it with brake fluid. We're going to attach that to the clutch slave cylinder bleeder screw. We will open the clutch bleeder screw and what we're going to do is pump brake fluid into the system 
from the bottom up, which then chases the air all the way up, and you'll see the bubbles coming right out of the brake fluid reservoir. You want to get yourself a common syringe-style turkey baster, and what you're going to do is suck out all the brake fluid from the brake fluid reservoir. You want to get the fluid out, because what we're going to do is we're going to introduce new brake fluid in from the clutch slave cylinder, and we're going to fill it essentially from the bottom up. You're going to see the brake fluid reservoir fill up from the bottom along with the air bubbles coming through. Now to do this I just use a common pump style oil can which you can buy at any Pep Boys or AutoZone and you're going to use a new clean one with a piece of three millimeter flex line fill it with new brake fluid. We use Ate Type 200 and what I'm going to do here is I'll put my seven millimeter wrench on top of the bleeder screw first, get it ready. Then I'm gonna take my oil can and I'm gonna just bring a little bit of brake fluid to the top to get as much air out of the hose as possible so I don't introduce any new air into the system. I'm gonna slip it over my bleeder, bring the bleeder close to the closed position, then I'll open it a bit I'm going to put a little bit of brake fluid into the reservoir so you can kind of see what's happening as we fill this thing up. Now since we're going from the bottom up, any pressure I put on the system is going to essentially start bringing air bubbles to the top along with fluid. You're going to see a little bit of air coming up there and our, and our master cylinder is essentially chasing air out of the bottom and there you see it coming up. All those air bubbles you see are air bubbles that you would be normally trying to force through the bottom of the vehicle, which you will never do. You'll never get it all out of the bottom of the vehicle because it'll take quite a bit of moving the pedal. Once I've got all the air bubbles out, it'll almost be nothing coming out. And then I'll slowly start closing my bleeder screw. And at some point, it completely stops. And at that point, you've got no more air in the system. You can disconnect your line, and you're almost ready to go at that point.